Hey there, I am Courtney Brickner, owner of The Crafty Brick. I've got a question for you. You're down with TPP? Well, if you're working with sublimation, you definitely need to be. It's actually the art of finding the perfect balance between time, temperature, and pressure. You can have the perfect substrate, but if you don't have the right balance between those three things, your project is not gonna come out um, just as you're hoping that it would. So I'm going to show you some tricks that I have done over the years that have helped me find just how I can get the time, temperature, and pressure down. Because you're gonna look at, when you look online and see different things, you're gonna see a lot of people say, oh, I always do my projects at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And that's great for the people that that works for, but that's not the case with all heat presses because not all heat presses are created exactly the same. So your heat press might not be the ideal temperature at 400 and pressing for 60 seconds. So what I wanna show you today are some tricks that you can use to find the perfect time, temperature, and pressure for your heat press, as well as not wasting a lot of your blanks while you're trying to do this. Because, I mean, the blanks are expensive and you don't wanna just be testing things out and wasting material at the same time. So that's what we're gonna work on today and I'm looking forward to showing you. So first things first, we've got our heat press here. I'm using the Heat Press Nation, the signature series, 15 by 15 clamshell auto open slide out. I know it's quite a mouthful, but it's a really great machine. And I love that it actually closes. And then when the time finishes, it opens up automatically and you can slide it out. So you don't have the risk of burning your fingertips like a lot of regular clamshells. Um, when you put your material in, sometimes you can burn your fingers when you're getting them out. So this one slides out so that you don't have that problem. So I do really like that. And I'm also using the signature series, the Heat Press Nation signature series mug press. And I really like it because you can switch out the attachments. Right now I've got the mug attachment, which accommodates 11 ounce and 15 ounce mugs. But I also have the tumbler attachment, which is for the 20 ounce skinny tumblers. So I really like that and it just makes it really convenient because I think they have about six more attachments that you can use with this specific mug press. First thing we're gonna do with our heat press is to check the pressure. This is a heat press that we haven't done anything with. We, it's brand new, we haven't used it yet, and it is off. When we get our new heat press, we can do what's called the paper test. And we wanna take just a plain sheet of paper, set it so that it's part, part of the way in the press and then part of the way out. You're gonna push it down till it locks, and then you're gonna pull on the paper and see if it comes out. If it pulls out easily, that means that the pressure on your press is not very high. It's very low, and you definitely need to have more pressure than that. So you're gonna locate on your press where you change the pressure. On mine, it's this knob right here on top. Some of them is gonna to be towards the back. Some of them, it'll be just on the top. Some of them will be maybe on the um, apparatus on the back of your machine. So I'm just gonna turn it a couple turns and then we're gonna test it again. I'm gonna put the paper back in, close it. And actually that's great. The paper is not coming out, I'm tugging on it. I'm gonna do it on each side also, just to make sure that the pressure is the same all the way around. Oh, actually it does pull out of this side. I'm gonna check on this side as well and it pulls out of this side. So it means that I wanna just bump it up just a teeny bit more. It was definitely harder to get it out of the sides, but I wanna make sure that the pressure is going to be the same all the way around. So the front is good. Let's check these sides. Oh, that one is definitely not coming out now. And let's check this other side. All right, this one is good as well. So my pressure is good, the paper test, we passed it, our paper did not slide out easily out of the machine, so we know that our pressure is gonna be good so that we can start working on a project. The next thing that we want to do is to check the temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my press on, and when it heats up, I'll come back and we'll talk about how to check your temperature settings and 
not waste material. Okay, now we've got the heat press on. It is very warm right here. The first thing we would like to do now is see what the temperature is. I have the temperature set to 395 degrees and I'm going to use my heat gun here um, and see what the temperature actually is. A heat gun is really, really useful in just determining that your heat press is actually reaching the temperature that you set it to. Since temperature is one of the key components in getting a correct sublimation print, you wanna make sure that the temperature that you've set your press to is actually what the temperature is. So we take our temperature gun, we point it right at the heat press, and we are about an, about an inch and a half, two inches away from it. And we don't wanna go at an angle like this because that's not gonna be accurate. You actually wanna go into the heat press and do it right under. So I'm just gonna press this button here, and it's telling me that my temperature is 395 degrees. My press is set to 395 degrees. So my press is actually perfect for what I set it for and my temperature gun tells me that, that it's accurate. So how are we going to find the right time, temperature and pressure without wasting a lot of material? I'm sure you're wondering that. I mean, you've got to figure it out with some material to see what it looks like. I've got an answer for that. This is actually a shower curtain. So it is 70 by 72, it's huge. And the wonderful thing about it is it's 100% polyester. This thing costs $7. So you spend very little money and you have a huge amount of space to work with to test out different time, temperature and pressure settings. So that's my recommendation, is to get a large piece of fabric. The shower curtain is nice because it's just simple, it's already cut, but you could also go to the fabric store and get a big piece of fabric that is 100% polyester. And you wanna make sure that that's key because testing it on the polyester fabric is going to give you the most accurate results when we're testing out our different images. Then what I do is I print out some of my designs. This printer is seriously so fast, I love it. It's the Sawgrass 500, and I'm using text print paper to do the design. And these two designs that I have printed out here, both of these are going to be available. One, the Rays and Shades, that's available if you sign up for the All Access Pass. And then the I Can Do Hard Things is actually a Tumblr design, and that's also available after this class, when you go to the more information page for Crafty Brick, you'll be able to sign up to be in the Crafty Crew. And when you do that, you'll also get this other Tumblr image. So that's where you can find both of these designs that we're gonna be using. Then what I do is I cut a little piece of the shower curtain. So I've just cut this piece here because I don't really wanna work with that really big piece of fabric. So I just cut a, a little sample piece. And then I'm also going to cut another sample size of my design. And the reason I print multiple images is because I want to test out what does the image look like when I've got it at 400 degrees and I'm doing it for 60 seconds and I've got it on medium pressure. I want to see what it looks like with that. And then when I um, press it, I take it out, see what it looks like on my fabric. And then I'm like, hmm, that looks good, but let me see what it looks like if I change the time and temp and the pressure, maybe change it to 395 degrees and then change the time to 50 seconds and still keep the pressure to medium. Most of the time you're gonna be using medium pressure and the medium pressure is what we set it to when we did the paper test because if the paper pulls out, that's very, very light pressure. Most of the things are not going to use very light pressure. They're gonna use medium to heavier pressure. So. If you wanted it to be heavy pressure, then you would just turn the knob a couple more settings or a couple more twists, and then it would be on the heavier pressure. But what we set it to earlier doing the paper test, that is medium pressure. That's what we're at right now. So I also have this little box. When I'm working with fabric, I really prefer to work with a spray adhesive as opposed to tape, the heat resistant tape. When I'm working with hard substrates, I do use the tape because it keeps my paper in place. But when I'm using um, soft material, 
then I prefer to use the spray adhesive because I feel like it holds my image in place a little bit better than the tape does. And there's no movement because when you have the movement, that's when you have the problems with ghosting. And that's when you're going to get a double image. that kind of looks like, a, just like, I don't know, kind of blurred. Your image is a little bit blurred and there's two of them, like a shadow around it. So that's ghosting. And I find that that happens more frequently when you're using tape on soft substrates. So I created this little box here and I use this so that I don't get the spray adhesive all over the place. It's just a very simple little box. And then I have basting spray that I'm using today, but you can use any type of repositional spray adhesive, Loctite, Elmer's glue. Um, there's many different ones. The Gorilla Glue also has some, but it's just a spray adhesive that you can, if you stick it on, you're able to move it around just a little bit before it sets. So that's what I like to use when I'm using these soft substrates. So I've got my design here that I cut out. And then the other thing that we're also, is very important to protect your heat press. What we're doing, I've got a little paper feeder under here. Let me just show you what it looks like. I've got this. And I keep that under my heat press just so that my butcher paper is really accessible, really easily accessible. I've got my butcher paper here and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller because I don't need that much since we're just doing a really small sample size to test this design. But to protect your press from having any ink bleeding on it, we put some paper down below our fabric and then we place our fabric and then we're also going to put paper on top of our design when we put the design on. So I'm just gonna take my design, I set it inside the box, and I'm just gonna do a quick spray of my spray adhesive. Just a quick little dusting. Then I'm gonna take my design, set it on my paper. Actually, I'm gonna do it on the edge of my paper here. I've got my butcher paper below, and then I've got my butcher paper on top because you don't want any of the ink to bleed onto the bottom of your heat press or onto the top. And my our press was set to 395 before, so I want to go ahead and set it to 400 because that is the time that I want to try it for our first setting. Okay, so I've got it at 460 seconds. Not 460 seconds, 400 degrees and 60 seconds is the time. So I push my heat press back in and then I close it. Now this is on the medium pressure that we set it on previously after we did our paper test. And what we're gonna do is we wait for this to come out. And I've got my pen handy here because what I wanna do is keep track of what settings I'm using because it's gonna be really hard when you've got all of these printouts of different images and you don't remember which one was the 60 seconds, which one was the 50, what was the pressure, what was the time. So you really want to try and remember which ones you did. So I take my pen and I write directly on my material just so I can remember. So what this image looks like this, I use these settings with it. And then it just helps me keep track of all of the settings that I've used. So we've got five seconds left on here and it gives me a countdown when it's getting ready to open and then it opens automatically. All right, this one looks pretty good. So we did 400 degrees here and we did 60 seconds and we did medium pressure. So I just write that on there, 400 degrees, 50 seconds, medium pressure. So I know when I'm going to look at that next time that I'll remember. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna keep the temperature at 400, but I wanna change the time and go down to 50 seconds and see if that makes a difference. The good thing is that I've already got some images here to cut out because I do I don't want to use a different image because it's important to see 
what the time, temperature, and pressure settings do with, to the color of the same image. So that's why I'm using the same image again. So I'm gonna spray here again. I'm gonna use this same fabric. Actually, I'm, I wanna make sure that I cover the other one because initially I just had it like that. If you leave that other ink out, then that's gonna get on the top of your press. So you wanna make sure it's covered up on both sides. And then we close it. We're doing 50 seconds this time. And this is what is just gonna help us figure out what is going to be the best time, temperature, and pressure settings for our press. Now this process does take a little bit of time. It does take a little bit of patience, but it really is the best to figure out what is the best for your heat press because you can't go off of what's best for other people's heat press. We've got three seconds left here. We're gonna see what this one looks like. So this one is four, 400 degrees and this is 50 seconds. 400 degrees, 50 seconds, medium pressure. Oops. And actually I already see a difference in these, these two images. The 50 seconds is actually a little bit brighter than the 60 seconds. So I am going to see what happens if we just do one more test. Two knot, two, two twists, changing the pressure just a bit. I'm gonna spray and then put this down. Put your paper on top. All right, and let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, we've got four seconds left. Here we go. Up it goes. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Oh, this is quite a difference. So I increase the pressure. Look at this one compared to these. Actually, let me write that on there so I can remember it. It was 40 seconds and high pressure. So there's quite a big difference between these two and this one. So the medium pressure worked out a lot better in this instance. So that is why we're using this polyester shower curtain because it really gives us a good insight into what is going to work best with our heat press. So I'm not gonna be going over more testing today, but I just wanted to give you a little glimpse into a method that you can use to test out your time, temperature, and pressure settings on your press without wasting a lot of material. So you would just repeat this process however many times was necessary in order for you to get to the color and the vibrancy that you want and like. And then when you reach that, then you can just realize that that is the time, temperature, and pressure settings that work best for your press. If you're working with an actual shirt that you've made and you messed up, you will, I'm sorry to say it, but it'll happen. If you've got some ghosting, don't throw that shirt away because you can still, like you normally make a shirt with something, an image right here, but you've got the sleeves, you've got the front of it, you've got the back of it. There's so much material you can work with. And the good thing about that is that's actually something that you plan to use. You know, it's a material that you want to see if it works. So it's a great option if there's an image that maybe you didn't come out the way you had hoped, you continue to use that piece of material and test out some other images on it because it's the actual material that you're working with. So I always reuse shirts that I mess up. I never throw them away. That's just another recommendation to use, to continue to use your things that you actually messed up on because they're not trash. You can still put them to good use. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is pressure settings for the Mog Press. Unfortunately, there is no special hack that you can not waste a lot of material testing out the time, temperature, and pressure settings on your Mug Press because there isn't anything that will fit in here that can test the accuracy of the settings. So I did have to go through a few mugs when I was testing these out. Um, you're just going to go ahead and put your mug in there. 
and you see that that I just kind of I basically closed it like with a finger that's not enough pressure so you're gonna use your set your knobs on your mug press and turn them that's a little bit better but you want to close it with a little bit of force because the pressure is definitely going to help with the mug press that one is a little bit better a little bit more all right you want to have a little bit of force when you're closing it and opening it if you're closing it with one finger then that's definitely not enough pressure on your mug press and the good thing with this mug press is that it's really simple to switch from the tumbler to the mugs to the shot glass. There's lots of different attachments that you can use for it. So you just open it up and unscrew these knobs. And then you also unscrew the part that goes into the actual machine from the heating, the heating element. So you just take that off and then you take your attachment, whichever attachment you have decided to get, you slide it in there and there's little holes on top. Okay, I just wanted you to see how simple it is to screw these in. You see the holes are here and they've got different placements depending on the attachment that you are putting in four holes there. The mug press one goes on those middle two. And then the tumbler attachment goes on these outer two holes. And you just screw them in. Very simple to switch it out. And you plug in the heating element over here and twist it so that it's tight. Okay, and before I told you I'd use the spray adhesive for the soft substrates that I was working with. When I'm dealing with tumblers or mugs, I actually do use heat tape. So I've got my heat tape from Heat Press Nation as well as the heat tape holder. So I just press at the seam or put the tape on the seams of the paper so you can see how you would put it on. And I wanted to show you something that, I, that helps me remember where I am pressing because if you put too much heat on a particular spot then it's going to burn so you just want to make sure I always start with my tape up so when I close my press and you see that when I close it it's definitely got good pressure it took me a little bit of work to get that closed that's good pressure for your tumbler but I make sure that the tape is showing when I've got it closed. So with tumblers, you're going to actually turn halfway through. So you're going to do about 70 seconds and then you turn it over to the other side. So then the tape is going to be on the bottom and you close it and you do it another 70 seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on our press so we can check the temperature with our laser gun and see if it's reading properly. Okay, when we're checking the temperature on our mug press, it's a little bit different than when we're checking it on the heat press because it's a curved surface. It's not going to give the most accurate reading like the heat press did. Um, so when we're checking it, we don't want to press point it right down at the heat press. We're going to point it at the back surface of the press and go from there. And we are measuring at about 380 and our mug press is set to 365. So we're in the range of, you know, the 10 to 15 degrees variance with our mug press because that's kind of what we're gonna see since we're working with different surface than we are with the heat press. Okay, so we're good to go with that temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and test out a tumbler. So I've got my heat gloves here. You always wanna wear your heat gloves when you're making a mug because it is very hot. Very, very hot. And I have already taped my mug. So I'm going to put the tape on the top like we discussed earlier so that I can remember where it goes. And you see, I push it closed. It's got some pressure. So now it's going to go for 70 seconds on this side. And then we're gonna flip it over and it'll go 70 seconds on the other side. And the reason that we've got the tape there is so I can remember which side I started on so that I'm not getting too much heat to one side of the tumbler. That's why it's important to remember where you start. 
All right, we've got about six seconds left and we're gonna flip the tumbler over to the other side. And just roll it around. Now we've got the tape at the bottom of the mug press. So we're heating the other side evenly for another 70 seconds. All right, we've got about five seconds left on our timer. And this is nice because it gives us the countdown when it's ready to open. All right, and then we take it out and it's very hot. So you definitely don't want to touch it. You keep the gloves on when you're taking the tape off. All right, let's get this tape off and reveal what is on the other side. One of my favorite parts, the reveal to see what you've made. All right, here we go. Ah, stuck to me. I can do hard things. I just love this tumbler. There we go, the bright colors with the rainbow. There you have it, that's how you make a tumbler. We had the right time and the temp and the pressure, and this is what we get when we have that beautiful symphony of variables. So there are some general guidelines when you're working with your mug press, but the thing is when you're working with it, you're using so many different substrates, like you're using ceramic, sometimes you're using stainless steel, sometimes you're using glass, each of those is going to have a different time, temp, and pressure setting. So you're going to have to test out each one to see what works best. So there's some general guidelines, like for instance, like a tumbler press is usually 365 degrees for about 70 seconds, 60 to 90 seconds on each side turned. Mugs, you don't have to turn. So when you put them in, they're generally going to be about 385 and it's going to be about 200 seconds. So you're just going to play around with what is going to work best. One thing that has helped me is using this time, temperature, and pressure setting sheet so that I can write down what the time, temperature, and pressure is for each thing that I'm working with. Like here, I've got a mug is 385 degrees for 190 seconds because it's hard to keep all that information straight and to remember what the time and temp is for each thing that you're working with. So this is one of the things that you can get by signing up for the Crafty Crew and checking out my more information page and you'll be able to get this sublimation cheat sheet so that you can keep track of all your time temp and pressure settings so that you're set up for success on having the best sublimation results with all of the items that you're working with. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope I was able to answer some questions so that you can get down the art of finding the perfect time, temp, and pressure for creating your sublimation projects. And hopefully you're gonna do it without wasting too much material in the process.